Oh, and then of course I was wondering. You're saying um, I was talking earlier about the fact that I haven't really been out much, and I've kind of been, you know, keeping myself to myself and kind of trying to make sure that I'm where I need to be going forward in life in general and kind of getting some things in order. But I'm still kind of trying to go out at least a couple of times a month just to kind of experience whatever I can experience out there. And one thing that I'm definitely looking forward to is going to see Dixon at Coco's coming up this Friday. And the reason why I'm looking forward to it mostly is because if you're not aware, Coco, which is a legendary live music venue here in London, um, I think for the most part, I would say nightlife in London isn't that great, especially when it comes to clubs. I think one of the things that really sets us apart when it comes to clubs is the variety, I think. I think for the most part, on any given weekend, you could go and go to a nightclub legitimately, like a club or a bar uh, with somebody DJing, and you see someone playing metal, someone playing reggaeton, someone playing dub, someone playing jungle, bass music, house, techno, disco, whatever. There's always somewhere you can go listen to that thing all night long. I don't think you can have that in any other city in the world, especially not a place like Berlin, which I'm in love with. But for the most part, it's pretty one beat. It's pretty techno, and that's about it. And then whatever else is left will be tech, disco and house for the most part. But most of it is techno, dark, industrial type of music. But I think in London, the variety is really good. But one thing that we really separate ourselves from when it comes to any city in the world is live music venues. We have some of the best live music venues. Like I think of off the top of my head, I think of that place called um, Paper Dress Vintage. It's this little spot in Hackney Central that is essentially a vintage secondhand, basically, store. Um, most of it is kind of kitschy, you know, what, what would you call it? Rocket-y type of, beyond retro type of, you know, um, vintage items, varsity jackets, think dresses, think tartan or plaid shirts that boys like to wear when they fucking go to festivals, denim shorts, hats, and whatnot. That's the standard kind of vintage shop you'd expect to see in most metropolitan cities, but it also doubles up as a venue so upstairs they have like a venue where they do you know dj nights or they have bands playing and it's usually a really good kind of range of music you can hear on any given day so imagine that's a cry good sick lineup then you've got the other place in clipping um is it lower clapton blondies that's mostly you know a lot of metal a lot of punk um sort of bands come and play there's a very small dive bar maybe a hundred capacity cap you know at the stretch maybe it's only 50 even to that, in that regard so all those places are really amazing another place is really cool is obviously coco and that's a one of our better kind of live music venues out obviously in camden area which is kind of synonymous with a lot of kind of history concerning the uk music over there and i went to dick's no, so i went to coco the last time i can remember viscerally was going to see best coast right a legendary um shoegaze band and they played there and i remember how packed it was and how amazing the sound was and how amazing it was to see the performer in that kind of flipping auditorium and looking up and seeing everyone around it just looked felt amazing so when they did announce that they were going through a major refurb i think it's off the back of if i'm not mistaken they had like some sort of fire or something and they were going to invest money into kind of making it look spick and span one of the new directions they're trying to go for is trying to have it to be a multi-use venue so not only have it be you know a live music venue thing also have it be a place where you can host dj nights and if i'm not mistaken again i'm just going off to see if my pants here i think a most recent example was maybe the kind of music thing they had i think that happened at coco but so far i've been really um, resistant to kind of seeing anything online about it i want to go and just experience it with my own eyes and kind of see what it's like when i'm there and so far from what i've been seeing on this dixon all night event that's happening on friday it looks like other people are feeling the same way because the attendance again you know you can't take too much from it because it's kind of like you know people clicking attending on facebook events doesn't necessarily reflect how many people are going to be there but still for this dixon all nighter you've got 1k people attending on ra you've got the tickets completely sold out absolutely sold out and it were already like a couple of days you know a few days already before the flipping event's gonna happen and usually in london or most places i'd imagine when events like this happen and they're sold out towards this you know on the same week the event's on you see loads of tickets pop up for resale because people you know maybe bought them on impulse on a whim and now they're kind of having second ideas second thoughts about buying going and then suddenly they all pop up again but the demand has been aggressive to the point where there's been no tickets being available and to me it's really interesting to happen because you know dixon obviously is somebody that i'm a big fan of and who i love and loads of people that they love also and it's clearly gone on to you know headier heights over the last few years but i felt like in the last 18 months or so dixon has been in london or in the uk overall enough times for most people to see him so that's why i'm surprised that this event 
which again, I know it's him all night, so that maybe kind of makes it different. But the fact that he's kind of um, demanding this level of de- the fact that he's able to kind of drive this level of demand, even though he's been in the country many times in the last eighteen months, just goes to show how popular he actually is now. Like you know, because I think I missed out a couple of events in between him being here, maybe three or four, maybe three or four, but he's kind of it seems like month for month just gaining new fans and becoming even more kind of commercial in that sense but still remaining somewhat underground he's probably why my my main kind of commercially guilty vice dj person i listen to because a lot of people out there are into kind of someone like a bicep who's super i'd say commercial but still kind of has a little bit of that underground kind of core or is able to kind of pull from that sort of sound or has respect or people who kind of would regard themselves as underground or a scene but I feel like Dixon, for me, is my one real guilty vice in that regard. But I don't feel guilty about it because I still think he's, you know, up there with one of the best DJs in the world. And I still think the thing that makes Dixon really amazing is that he can play to normie crowds, but he also can play to, like, scenesters. And I've seen it happening. You know, people that you would regard as chin strokers. I still remember that amazing night, the flipping... um Innovision label night at Fold a couple of years ago, and Dixon playing and seeing the smile on his face, you know, playing for like 500 people, and it being a really small packed room, sweat dripping from the ceilings, and him just having the whole flipping audience and he's flipping the palm of his hands was absolutely spectacular to see. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him playing at Flipping Coco's, and I cannot wait. I swear on my ass, I cannot wait to see what happens and see how he kind of goes on. But I'm generally surprised that so far. There's been nothing popping up in terms of additional tickets. They're completely out, all completely gone. Um, and yeah, so, so Dixon, Friday 10th of February, 10 to 5 a.m. here in London town. I'm really looking forward to seeing it happen. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing it happen. Of course, if you ain't got tickets, I feel sorry for you. The one thing I would say, if you haven't got tickets, please do not buy them from flipping you know, resellers who are not on official platforms, especially places like Facebook and Instagram. The risk is just too high. I know ticket swap is a bit, you know, hit and miss but you're better off sticking with tickets ticket swap than other platforms because people love to scam and to trick people out of their money in those type of situations especially when you're desperate and you really want to go somewhere people will use that desperation and kind of try and get the better of you so don't do it if you can avoid it don't do it 